<laughs> Tomato soup, yeah. I love you so much, sweetie pie. <laughs> On July 17, 2017, Maylie was admitted to OHSU Hospital in Portland, Oregon to undergo an allogeneic stem cell transplant. 29 days after being admitted, she would take her last breath after becoming septic and ultimately losing her battle with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. To say August 15, 2017 has changed our lives is a gross understatement. 
To those of us that were close to watch her struggle through pain and suffering most likely will never erase the nightmare that would ensue from our eyes. She was beyond courageous in her defeat and we will forever be grateful at how strong she had been when facing this life and death situation. We are as proud as any parent could be and you will always be as close to us as our own heartbeat. On December 14, 1995, Maylie Kendall Workman was born on a chilly winter evening at St. Luke's Hospital in Boise, Idaho. Camille would undergo two days of induced labor, only to be told she would have to undergo an emergency cesarean due to complications. Within minutes, she was brought full force into our world, and our lives were turned upside down by the most beautiful sight we had ever witnessed. Our sweetie pie was born. It's okay, Daddy's here. Daddy's got you. I promise I will never let anything happen to you. Unfortunately, Mom had to wait the longest to get to hold her sweet child. She had carried her for just over eight months, yet she would have to sit lonesome in a recovery room while Dad got the honors to be present during her introduction to the world. Finally, she would get to lay her eyes on the pride and joy that was her daughter. Well, here's a picture of the fam here. <laughs> me, show me a smile. She's on the spot. You're on the spot, huh? Oh, big sneeze. <laughs> Where the girls? Say hi. <laughs> Say I'm pretty cute. <laughs> Smile, pretty girl. Smile, pretty girl. Oh, she's so old. <laughs> you can take this to show and tell, baby girl. <laughs> Going in. To say we were merely crazy might be putting it mildly. Having Maylie was like a shiny new toy. Everywhere we went, people wanted to hold her and try and get her to smile. I remember we had a babysitter for New Year's Eve and we ended up leaving at about 9 o'clock as we were already missing her. She most definitely had us mesmerized and I'm pretty sure she liked the attention. One thing Camille and I have in common is we both have twin brothers. Both are fraternal, but there was a thought in the back of both of our minds that we might have better odds than most when it comes to having multiple children. Ultimately, we had just the one, and even though Camille would have wanted more, I felt it was better to spoil one versus struggle with many. Uh, I'm off to work. Somebody's got to keep this family in the lap of luxury. Oh. Additionally, Camille has been a type 1 diabetic since she was 9 years old, and in my eyes, we were blessed to have a healthy child and fortunate enough for Camille to not have any complications from her pregnancy. I was perfectly content with these two beautiful women in my life, and I couldn't ask for anything more. And you are a genius.
This would actually work in Maylie's favor, as she mentioned on more than one occasion how thankful she was to be an only child. A lot of her uniqueness came from her learning at her own speed and in her own way. She would spend countless hours drawing in a room, and she may not have been able to be so independent if she had an annoying sibling around all the time. Camille and I both grew up with multiple siblings, so it was often a topic we would discuss, but ultimately all our love was meant to be given to this one-of-a-kind princess on a pedestal we called Sweetie Pie. Hi, Smiley! I'm home! So he said, deductible. And I thought he said, duck bill! <laughs> duck bill, right? Right? Deductible? I thought you said duck bill. <laughs> Isn't this nice? So were you totally spoiled? You don't seem like an only child. Oh, you're an only child. That makes so much sense. So could your parents not have any more kids? Oh, I like this one. Yes, oh my gosh, me too. Girl, we are sisters. Sister. No, no, come on. This band. Dude, you're really... stupid for even no, coming you're with stupid. me. If you didn't want to come with me, you should have oh, just Oh shoot, did I lock the door? Home? No, 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 I was last out, I got it. Oh, thanks, man. I can see Mom. every month of you getting pregnant. Mom. Oh. Give me a kiss. Give One of Maylie's first passions was a good old fashioned kiss, and there were plenty to go around. Oh, you're such a sweetie. Chalice loves you. Give her a kiss, Chalice. Give her a kiss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 What's the dog say? Yeah. What's the dog say? Yeah. yeah. What's the cow say? Yeah. What's the cow say? Moon. 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 <laughs> da. Da. 
As Maylee's vocabulary increased, so did her love for hanging with Dad and watching as I played video games. There were times when she would sit in silence for a whole hour as she watched intently, imagining that she was in control. As entertaining as it was for both of us, I have a lot of deep-seated regret when it comes to video games as it robbed me of countless hours I could have been doing something more constructive. In short, it took away time from family and friends that at the time I took for granted. Many lessons are still being learned even as an adult, and that is one lesson I wish I had learned sooner. There were many memorable moments we shared, though, even well into our high school years. We would play games like World of Warcraft and Battlefield that took us on quests and adventures that made it feel more like we were best friends and not father-daughter. It is definitely a bittersweet feeling when reminiscing about these moments, but that was our special bond that we had, and for that reason alone, I will cherish those memories forever. Very intent on Dad's games. I get to Mac, so I won't play video games with her all day. Not the greatest role model, that's for sure. Maybe. Say, Happy Halloween! Throw it for Joey! <laughs> hey Dad, what are you this Halloween? Or what? They couldn't all be winners. I had to fend off the ladies somehow. One of our fondest memories was when tucking Maylee in for bed, we would sing songs to her. The one telltale song that let her know that it was bedtime was You Are My Sunshine. She knew what this song represented, and most definitely, she was not always on board. How about, How about this song? You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. <laughs> I love you. It's sky dark. You don't like mommy's song? Okay, okay, okay. We'll okay. sing something else. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. You are my sunshine. <laughs> okay, we're sorry, we won't do that. <laughs> she doesn't like that song. Okay, how about roll, roll, roll your boat? One of the greatest moments I'll ever have was two nights before Maylee was intubated. She acknowledged that she loved when I used to play guitar and sing for her and Mama. I was always a little more timid and uncomfortable when it came to the spotlight, so I shied away from my musical talents the more involved I became with computers. My twin brother was always amazing in front of a crowd and sang with all his might while I would be more reserved and reticent. But that night, as I tried desperately to comfort her, she started singing You Are My Sunshine. As I cried and sang along with her, I prayed with all my might that my sunshine, our only sunshine, would be granted a second chance at life and not to take our sunshine away. We continued to reminisce and sing some Jack Johnson songs, and we forgot all about being in a hospital room. To me, and I hope for her, we were home in our hearts, and she knew that I loved her with all that I am. Not only did Camille sing this song to her often, after arriving home from the hospital, we slowly started sifting through our memories and various keepsakes that had been piling up through the years. When looking through an old box of Maylie's, Camille noticed the other half of a necklace that Maylie had bought her on Mother's Day many years ago. 
This necklace was in the shape of the sun, and it read, You are my sunshine. The sun split in two, and Maylie kept one half, and Camille had the other. She wanted her mama to know that there would always be a sunshine whenever they were together. It was a beautiful moment to see the sun brought back together again, and it was fortune for her to find it during the lowest point of our lives. One of Maylie's favorite movies of all time was Inside Out. It tells the story of a young girl and depicts each of her emotions as a character. The lead character is joy, everything that is happy, loving, and vibrant. For the most part, Maylie was filled with joy, and as a young girl, we can still hear her laughing, echoing in our ears as she jumped on her trampoline or begged to be tickle tortured. She was a bundle of joy, and happy days were abundant. Next up was sadness. I'm sadness. Oh, hello. I, I'm i joy. So, can I just, if you could, I just want to fix that. <laughs> Thanks. She keeps joy in check by making her realize that joy and sadness can sometimes come together and be as one. This would be the feeling that consumes us the most at this time. While we are crushed with sadness beyond our wildest dreams, we could not be more proud of how brave, resilient, and courageous she was throughout this past year. She always faced everything head on with very few complaints and we are overjoyed with her benevolence towards others. She truly learned her mother's lesson of an attitude of gratitude. I think the part that really hit home with this movie was the part where they move, and anger, fear, and disgust can play a huge role in this kind of change for anyone. I want to go home. Please don't be mad. Oh, sweetie. We're not mad. And you know what? I miss Minnesota, too. I miss the woods where we took hikes. And the backyard where you used to play. Spring Lake, where you learned to skate. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> we had asked Maylee how she felt about moving to Oregon at nine years old, but at that age, it's hard to truly understand what that means. I also moved at nine years old and it felt more like a little vacation, but as the years rolled by you come to realize it's permanent and maybe you weren't so on board with the decision as you first thought. Needless to say, she had a lot of great friends that she had to leave behind and even though she retained friendship with her best friend for a while, life has a unique way of letting the past slip away. 
Meili would struggle to find a friendship like the one she had in Boise, but over time she eventually found her place and formed some bonds that would last through high school and beyond. Friendship Island was very dear to her, and she would constantly go out of her way for her friends and family. She was always willing to help those around her in any way she could. We can recall several times where she would spend the only money she had on others just to bring a smile to their face. She always went out of her way to do what she could, and it was one of the sweetest qualities about her. I admit it could also be frustrating watching her give away her last dollar, and at times it was for little trinkets or silly things, but her intentions were always in the best place, and we couldn't be more thankful that we raised such a generous and giving daughter. Fall Island is my personal favorite. Come back here, you little monkey! <laughs> oh, you're so... Yep, goofball is the best. I would have to agree that being a goofball was one of my favorite aspects of Maylee's personality. She would keep us laughing up to the very end, and even the nurses would often chuckle at her unique sense of humor. <laughs> That's a barnyard of fun. I like this pulled it out. You pulled what out? My tooth. So yeah. it could come out for the tooth fairy and I mailed it to her under my pillow. Oh, yeah? Let me see your teeth. Oh, let's take a good look. Whoa. Okay. How much do you think the tooth fairy will bring you? Eleven cents? Huh? A dime and a penny? Yeah. That's eleven cents. Yeah. Is that all? Yeah. That's all you're going to get? Well, I think twelve cents. Yeah? Uh huh? Whoa. Who knows? We'll see tonight, huh? Yeah. Say so see you later. Over and out. See you later. Over and out. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <laughs> well, sing me something. Uh, uh. I, I gave you a kiss. You said you would. I gave you a kiss. I can keep that, miss. Hey, now. That's not very nice of you. Hey, now. You're a rock star. It's the game where we go Let's see. I'm pretty, Grandpa and Grandma. One of my most memorable moments was when I was trying to get Maylee to say certain things on video. At times, we would obsessively try and get her to say just the right thing, but she would definitely ham it up for the camera. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Is that pretty. all you can say? No one can't hear me. No one can't hear you? I'm there. Oh. You can make believe they do. What? You can make believe they do. I'm pretty. <laughs> I'm pretty hard, Dad. Yeah. I'm pretty Grandma and Papa. <laughs> there, that was perfect. Butterfly, Karen. I'm a butterfly, one of my favorite moments was when I was trying to get her to say Happy Mother's Day for her mama. It was the cutest thing I've ever seen, and for Camille, it's been a treasure that will last a lifetime. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. What did you say? Happy Mother's Day, Mama. We love you very, very much.
Put your sunglasses on. Get really close and get all moving. Happy Mother Day, Mama. Happy Mother Day, Mama. We love you. We love you. <laughs> Oh yeah, Mother's Day 2015, and you're on video. Say something nice to your mother. Hi. You could give me a today's version. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I need to give you my sunglasses. <laughs> Hopefully I could hear you. It was kind of quiet. There's traffic in the background. I'm not showing it again. <laughs> I don't know where she gets it from. And here's where she turns into a chickmunk. A chickmunk? Doesn't she sound like a hyper chickmunk? Do the, do the cake one. The cake one? You mean the girls oh, that did the oh, cake yeah, one. Oh, yeah, like the drum drop, drop eaters or something like this, and they went, yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Maylee's selfie library is probably as extensive as any young girl. Her Snapchat filter would become her best friend as she sat and waited for her chemo treatments to complete. She never passed up a moment for a little comic relief, and I'm happy she did. While we have a lot of media footage when she was younger, we had a couple hard drive crashes and our video camera broke before smartphones took off, so we went a few years without much. She also entered a stage when we weren't allowed to take her picture for a couple of years, on top of coaching, mainly getting a job, and overall life becoming busier. We found that we had very few photos of her as she got older and eventually moved out on her own. And even though cancer robbed her of so much, it could never remove the goofball that lived inside of her. This was one of her true inner strengths in life, in that, through it all, she still continued to smile.
Before Maley was even born, we have always had some kind of animal in the home. Our first was Chalice, the nicest, sweetest Rottweiler you ever did meet. She was always so gentle with Maley, and we never had to worry about her. They were sisters from the very start. We also had two cats, Ebony and Inlay. Over time, Chalice and Ebony would also become best friends. Being an only child, Maley spent a lot of time with her animals. Unfortunately, Chalice was diagnosed with a bone tumor in her front leg, and within two months, she was gone from our lives. It was the hardest thing I've ever had to do when deciding to put her down. The vet told us we'd know when it was time, and on March 23, 2006, she was put to sleep in our home. It was Maylie's first encounter with death, and even she struggled with saying goodbye. We were all devastated after having spent 10 years with us. Ebony could also sense something was wrong, and towards the end, she would always be right by Chalice's side. It was remarkable how close they had become. Right before we moved to Oregon, Camille and Maylee surprised me on my birthday with another little girl, Roddy, we named Nina. She was adorable. I felt she needed a companion though, and while working on a job site while installing cable, I encountered another Rottweiler I just couldn't pass up. His name would be Cody, and they were instantly best buds. Maylee's love for animals would also continue to grow, and she would also join in the fun. Unfortunately, Nina would take on a trait inherited from her mother, and we had to give her up due to snapping at Maylee and even myself. Cody and Ebony would remain, though, and they also would become best friends. You got a friend in me. Good boy. Roll over, Cody. Good boy. Go get Cody a treat. Maylee's infatuation with animals was like nothing that I had ever seen. In eighth grade, she became a vegetarian, mostly in part out of respect for animals. She would further her love by not buying makeup or other items that harmed animals when making their products and would often find herself in arguments with her classmates defending her love for them. It left her vulnerable in that those that liked to hunt or even required it for survival often offended her as there was no excuse for such cruelty in her eyes. Holy! <laughs> <laughs> He's a funny dog, man. Yeah. This should be on America's <laughs> Funniest Home Videos. Yeah. Plenty of people with eyes closed They don't see you like I do Darling, I do Notes on the keys meant nothing to me The world didn't sing without you Birds in the trees fell silent for me The world didn't sing without you Maylee's love for animals carried into fiction as well. She loved her Pusheen, and in the hospital hung one from her IV and had others close by. Hello Kitty was also a favorite from the very beginning. 
Hello Hello Kitty, Kitty Lunchbox! Whoa, cool! Wait, let's see what's inside it. She also had many Where stuffed animals it? and loved panda bears. We even bought her the cutest little panda-like companion last year during induction whom she called Lymphoblastic. I would also use animals to help encourage her and make her feel better while in the hospital. Whatever it took to keep our baby girl from feeling pain. Crab would also receive special attention, but only until she took her first bite. I think crab was the only thing that got a pass when it came to being a vegetarian. Maylee loved animals so much she became one. Her sophomore year she got the opportunity to be the school mascot and she truly loved it. She wasn't a cheerleader per se, but she loved to let her personality shine through behind the mask and had a blast doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. No, lady, you want to give yourself a round of applause too? That was a good song. Hey, he's Oh. Maylee often expressed her love for animals, and at times more so than people, due to their ability to love unconditionally. We'll forever hear the echoes of her voice as her heart melted at the sight of an animal, and we can only hope that Chalice, Cody, Inlay, and Ebony once again have their best friend to keep them company. Maylee's drawing talent was very evident at an early age. Her kindergarten teacher noticed that most of the kids would only draw the basics, but Maylee would go above and beyond in the wrinkles and crinkles of skin and even clothing. Her attention to details definitely stood out. Once you're known as the artist in the family, you get a lot of colored pencils and drawing tablets for presents. She definitely put them to use though and would spend hours doodling or trying to draw her favorite cartoon characters. This talent was inherited completely from her mother, as I couldn't draw four beans. She really loved the anime style, but she had her own unique twist or interpretation of it, and even drew herself on many occasions.
When Maylee was 14, I bought her Photoshop. This opened a whole other world for her in that it allowed her to digitize many of her drawings and finalize them in Photoshop. The results were stunning, and one of her pieces that won her a scholarship at SWAC was misinterpreted as digital art versus a digital drawing. Needless to say, she won first prize. She would continue to win competitions with her sidewalk art using chalk. You could really feel the emotion in her work, and the eyes of her drawings would always tell a story. Whether she was drawing her friends or even herself, she always had a unique and loving perspective of the world when it came to those less fortunate. Her artistic abilities would continue with her love of tattoos. She even designed her own, an inverted dopamine and serotonin molecule on the back of her neck. She would later get a dahlia on her forearm with a chicken representing her grandma Marie. Maylee also used her talent to help others understand the issues she was encountering and where her pain would reside. It's often something leukemia patients would speak about often in that they may look normal to others, but inside they are suffering and in pain. This would be the last drawing she would create before going to OHSU. I can still hear her pencil tapping as she added the freckles for the finishing touch. We were always so proud of her abilities and constantly encouraged her to keep changing levels. But due to chemo and all the drugs she was having to take, her ability to draw and even read became very difficult and I know this drawing in particular took much effort to complete. One of the most profound drawings was this self-portrait she had been working on over the past year and it showcased different unique qualities about herself, not only physically but emotionally as well. She included her tattoo, her portacath for administering chemo, and one of her favorite quotes after diagnosis, you never know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. She acknowledged her likes and dislikes, things she was good at versus bad as well as her personal possessions. She often had these items tucked in her backpack as her life became all about traveling to doctor's appointments. The feeling we get when looking at her caricature is pure pride and gratification. She still had complete confidence in who she was and what she wanted. Cancer could never take these attributes from her and she could own her faults and difficulties and still continue to love life to the fullest. Her kisses that were left behind were a godsend to our aching hearts, and we find ourselves kissing them daily to allow us to feel closer to her. Out of all the talents she could possess, we are so grateful to have her drawings, as it has left us with many pieces of her that we will continue to gaze at for the rest of our lives. Drawing led into a natural fit later in life, and that would be makeup. She had many compliments on how she did her own makeup, and eventually she would join the drama team as the makeup artist. She would also get a chance to work at the Little Theater on the Bay doing makeup for a well-renowned artist for the play Oliver. He even gave her kudos for how well she did with little experience. Okay, I'm going to do the no mirror makeup challenge. Holy hell, <laughs> this is going to be so bad. <laughs> and my friend over here is being my cameraman. Mm -hmm. And yeah! Hello, Cassandra. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so first things first, I'm going to be doing concealer. Concealer. Okay. Something right there. Pretty good job, I would say. <laughs> I look like a drag queen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to town like this. 
Um, yeah, this this side this side turned out pretty good. I don't mind this side. But the um, I'm not even gonna say anything. Okay, that's good. Mm, just no. <laughs> Bye you. guys. Thanks for watching my epic failure. I love you. Have a good day. Bye bye. bye. Not only did Maylee love her own makeovers, she also loved getting her friends involved as well as experimenting with new hairstyles. While some were not at the top of my favorite list at the time, I can look back and see her beauty in every change and I'm glad she chose to listen to her inner voice and not care what others thought about her unique style. Standing out was never something I was comfortable with, but Maylee embraced it full force. She definitely had way more guts than myself when it came to drawing attention. It would be fitting that her favorite quote was by none other than Dr. Seuss. It goes, be who you are and say what you feel, because those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. I just wanna be okay, be okay, be okay. I just wanna be okay today. I just wanna be okay, be okay, be okay. I just wanna be okay today. I just wanna feel the day, feel the day, feel the day. I just wanna feel something today. And I just wanna feel the day, feel the day, feel the day. I just wanna feel something today. Open me up and you will see. I'm a gallery of broken hearts. I'm beyond a pair, let me be. And give me back my. Maylee loved face painting and dressing up for Halloween. She even helped a couple win the Swak Halloween competition last year and earned recognition at the local zombie fest. She had found her niche and her true talent was shining brightly. The sky was the limit on her potential and we were happy she seemed to have finally found her path. I'm a gallery of broken hearts. I'm beyond a bear, let me be. And give me back my broken Unfortunately, she would not be okay. In September of 2014, Maylee decided to move out on her own shortly before starting college. Her and Ian would eventually get their own place and for the next year we would learn to live separate lives with scattered visits in between. I was still coaching, Camille was very busy sewing for a German distributor and Maylee would have college classes to attend to. For the first time in a long time, I think we all felt some kind of new freedom and Camille and I began to enjoy camping and traveling more. Maylee also seemed happy with her new boyfriend and life was going great. In early March, Maylee spoke with Camille about going to the walk-in clinic due to having a hard time breathing and some swelling in her mouth and cheeks. She would have blood work, an ultrasound, and a small dose of prednisone, but they were unable to find anything wrong with her. Mom then recommended a dentist due to the sore on the roof of her mouth and her parotid glands were definitely more profound. Her vision and hearing was affected, she formed nodules on her head, we were all scared beyond belief, and for two and a half months we could not get any answers. Finally, on June 10th, exactly two years since graduating from high school, Maylee was told she had signs of lymphoma. We were devastated. On June 20th, Ian would propose and she would accept. The following day, a biopsy would confirm our worst fears. Maylee had cancer. 
She was later diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia and ordered to go to OHSU immediately. I love you so much, baby. After a painful bone marrow aspiration and getting an Omaya reservoir placed beneath her skull, she began to feel much better due to the massive steroid doses. We were so thankful that everything seemed to be going so smoothly and towards the end of her induction phase, she even began to feel like a prisoner due to the feeling better but not being able to leave. On August 5th, she would be released with a remission status and no signs of cancer. We were overjoyed. Things were finally looking up again. Over the past year, we have experienced our worst fears, heartbreak, acceptance, redemption, compromise, and regret. All of us would give up certain freedoms to ensure Maylie's safety. Maylie and Ian would move in with us to ensure she was well taken care of and to allow them to save money for their future. While there are many times we didn't see eye to eye, our main objective has never changed and that is we will always care for and love our daughter the best we know how. We were there every day of her life, and we would tell her endlessly how much we loved her. Even Maylee would get used to saying it two or even three times before you could walk out the door. There is no limit to how much love one can handle, and we were never shy to tell her so. Maylee would see her doctor for a bone marrow consultation in early May and spend time with family in Boise and Salt Lake City. We had discussed alternatives and waiting for one or even two more bone marrow biopsies before deciding on transplant, but once she returned, she was adamant that a transplant was what she wanted and that it would ultimately save her life. While I didn't agree with going to transplant so suddenly, we supported her full heartedly and continued to love her to the fullest but with many fears lingering inside. We maintained her be positive attitude throughout though, and we were able to take her on a few trips in June and early July. She missed Mother's Day for the first time ever, but we were able to have a fantastic Father's Day that I would gladly share with Camille as the three of us traveled to the Redwoods. We would also entice her to come camping with us for the first time in years. She seemed to be feeling better than she had in a while, and we were so proud of how much effort she was putting in to hang with mom and dad and enjoy her time before another month-long visit in the hospital. These would be some of the happiest moments in our lives, and we will keep these memories close to our hearts as long as we both shall live. <laughs> we love you so much, sweetie pie. I want to unsee what has been done to you.
laughter. <laughs> inspiration, that you are not a hero. I am here to tell you that you are wrong. You are so wrong. You have inspired. You were heroic. You were the greatest thing that happened to us and we will miss you for the rest of our lives. Mei last Facebook post to everyone came on her rebirth day on July 26, 2017. It showed her heart as well. She wrote, I've always managed to be positive through this past year of roller coasters and chemo, but now when I say be positive, I can really mean it because I now have a be positive blood type. My stem cell transplant is finished and I now will grow a new immune system thanks to the beautiful contribution my donor and amazing medical staff and nurses helping me get there. I appreciate each and every person who writes a nice message or card. It fills my heart with joy knowing so many people are thinking and praying for me. A lot of people have said I've inspired them and that is truly an honor because I don't feel like I've done anything remarkable, but I still love to hear it. Maylee's remarkable love continued even after death as she had signed up to be a donor. She would be unable to donate any of her organs due to her cancer, but she was able to donate one part of herself, and that would be her eyes. For those of you who know her mother, it's been her life's passion to help not only herself, but others across the world to save their vision. It's been her livelihood and job for the past 15 years since inventing her own product to prevent vision loss. Knowing that Maylee's last gift to this world would be to help research of vision loss in diabetic retinopathy, macular degeneration, and glaucoma to prevent and or improve treatments for those in vision loss was an amazing and proud moment for us all. Maylee truly is remarkable in life and in death. I wanted more than anything to have a second chance to show her how much more she could be loved to show her that there is nothing more important in our lives than our beautiful daughter. We were blessed with 21 years of joy in our lives and we will honor her each day forward in hopes that she can somehow still continue to touch lives for years to come.
love you. I love you. I don't even remember me, but we met at US Open 2011 in Boise, Idaho. It was my first time meeting your dad or any of the family. I think we were at some french fry place, something like that. But I remember being kind of jealous that the three of you were such a strong unit. I, I almost never have anybody coming out to cheer for me at a tournament. Uh, and yeah, even though we didn't get to talk too much, I think we talked a little bit about college and getting ready for it. It did kind of strike me that you were going to be fine because you had such a strong family around you uh, and you had such optimism uh, for the future. And I just wanted to emphasize that memory. Yeah, I mean, you've probably forgotten about it, but it made an impression on me that you really do have that strong support structure and you know that, that optimism and that, that's really, really valuable. Um, so yeah, I just encourage you to lean on that as you go through this, this trying period and, you know, just send my love and my hope from Denver. I really hope you get well. We're in the green for you. Hey, Mele. Uh, my name is Sean. We've never met, but, uh, I know your dad. He's, he's a, he's a badass, but, uh, Checking in from Detroit. I heard you have a an operation today. Um, just thought I'd uh, share this video with you and say best 
best wishes with you and I hope you recover uh, soon and quickly and I hope all goes well um, I can't really imagine what it's like to go through what you're going through right now so that that definitely takes a lot of strength and I, I definitely admire that um, anyway uh, I'm wearing orange and green specifically for leukemia and stem cell awareness just just for you alright so shout out to you and and Larry what's up dude alright so yeah I'm gonna give you a good shred of my best butterflies so alright Still not as tough as leukemia.
wish you the best. I mean, like, we'll meet sometime in the near future. I can only do flipper with a ball, but be like, you know, to another level. Really, yeah. Like, it's, it's done like rich time with a ball, like, easily. And then, like, two rich balls, you know. Oh, nice. This guy's a legend, Melee. Anyway, get better. Thank Yep. Nice. Thank you very much. There it is. Nice. Fifteen seconds. Hi, Melee. I'm Mark Monastere from New Orleans. We're definitely thinking about you and we hope you're feeling better. All the love in the world to you, and I'll try to attempt a trick for you. Nice. Beautiful, man. Thank you. And Haley, it's Dan's chance for Portland, Oregon. I hope you're feeling better. And um, I do a little bit of juggling. Here's some for you. Nice. Awesome, James. Okay. 最初はあの日本語で話しますけど、ぜひ良くなってください。Nice, <laughs> awesome. Hey, Meili, my name is Hua, and I am your father's friend. And I just want to say to you, hang in there. I know you can do it. And just to emphasize that, I'm going to do a trick for your pain house. Nice. Woohoo! If I just did two revolutions with a ball, then you can beat whatever you're going through. I believe in you. Come on, you can do this. You can do this. Hello, Meili. Here is Basek from Portland from Boat Fullback Championships. I wish you from my heart a very fast recovery and all the best. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Meili. Heard you're sick in the hospital. That sucks. And, uh, just, I, man, I'm wishing the best for you. I hope you get better. And uh, just keep fighting. Keep fighting. <laughs> nice. Yeah, screw fidget spinners, man. This is the new wave. Put a little hand eye coordination going on. I've only really been doing this for like. That's pretty awesome, man. Hi, that's Nick, obviously. Um, I wanted to, of course, take some time out of my day uh, to tell you how much we all care about you and how much we're all really just so proud of you. Um, you are so strong and you are fighting one of the most difficult battles that I've ever heard of. Uh, my stepmom also had cancer when I was much younger and I thought she had a, a tough journey. Um, but you have really shown your superhero abilities right now to power through such a difficult process. Um, so I want you to know that not just me, especially me personally, but all of this whole community um, that your family is a part of, give you as much of our positive thoughts and energy as we possibly can. And um, I want you to know that life never throws something at you that you cannot handle. So for you to come across a situation like this means that you do have the power inside of you. And I trust you. And I love you. And I hope you have a great day. <laughs> hey, Maylee, just a quick message to tell you that I'm thinking of you and love you and want you to know that we are, you are in our thoughts and prayers every single day. You are the biggest inspiration person that I know. You are fighting hard every day. I know that you've got the love and support of your mom and dad and your family. I feel it and I feel the love through Facebook and everybody sending prayers and thoughts out to you. We all love you. 
and we hope everything goes well for you tomorrow and hope to see everything come out exactly the way you deserve it because you are a fighter and we love you more than anything. Even though I have never met you one-on-one, -on -one, I just feel like I know you and I just feel that you are someone that I look up to every day. Thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for being the superwoman that I know that you are and we will um, look forward to seeing everything and seeing all the updates. Love you, Maylee. Hang in there, and we will uh, see you through Facebook.